In this lesson, we'll work on adding some secondary light sources into our scene. Okay, so we have our scene with our lighting and a few basic materials that have been applied. Now, looking at this, the lighting is maybe not quite what I would call complete. So there's maybe a little bit more darkness on this side of the room than what I might like. And there could be some opportunities to maybe bring just a little bit more light into sort of this section of the room up against the wall. Now, these don't necessarily have to be light sources that would normally be in the room. We can use uh, some kind of fake uh, light sources. Again, just to kind of add a little bit more visual interest. If you think about uh, photo shoots, movie shoots, things like that, there's very, very rare times that you're actually just going to set up the camera and start shooting straight away with natural lights. There's almost always some kind of secondary light sources, bounce lights, fill lights, accent lights, but they're usually off camera, so you never see them. But again, we can start to use sort of these same concepts to add just a little bit more visual interest to the lighting here. Again, maybe a light source or a few light sources that normally would never be in this room, but we could use them uh, just to add a little bit more visual uh, interest here. So let's go into our Create menu. Let's drop in a light. Uh, because we are using uh, gamma correction and we have some exposure controls on our camera from some of our earlier lessons, this is a great time to take advantage of some of our uh, photometric lights. So I'm going to drop in a photometric light. And just a simple free light should work just fine. There we are. I'll place this uh, just somewhere over here. So here's our light source that's been placed in the scene. Alright, so we can grab that and move this maybe somewhere back over here. There we go. And I'll really try to use this as a way of just bringing a little bit more illumination into uh, some of these other parts of the room. So mainly I'm going to focus on bringing a little bit more light kind of to this side of the room with the couch and maybe just a little bit here along this wall over here. So for our shape of this light, let's set it from a point to maybe something like a rectangle so that way it can act a little bit more like a light diffuser, something that we would see normally maybe in a studio. Now as far as the overall size on this, uh, really is co entirely up to you. In my case, I want to go with something that is maybe kind of a nice combination between having uh, some nice soft light, but uh, at the same time provides us with uh, something that is maybe a little bit more of a very definite point light. So I'm going to grab this and just rotate this back a little bit. Now that we have our rectangle set up for this. There we are. And as far as the actual position, again, entirely up to you. But in this case, I'm going to go with something that maybe elevates this light up just a little bit more. Okay, so let's see what that does for us. Uh, looking at the overall intensity of our light, if we were to come up here a little bit more toward the top, we should find uh, controls for intensity. We also want to make sure that we have shadows turned on for this light. So I'll turn on shadows. Uh, we'll give it some ray trace shadows, so that way these can be used with metal ray. And here's our intensity control. So right now this is uh, candelas is what we're looking at. So this is about 1500 candelas and we could choose if we want to maybe measure this in lumens we could do that as well so these are going to be based a little bit more on uh, some real world values so photometric lights are great for using uh, provided that we do have things like gamma correction turned on and provided that we do have our uh, camera exposures enabled otherwise our uh, photometric lights can really start to look really bright and washed out and blown out so uh, really, really important that we take all these things into consideration. Now, right now this is set to about, again, 1500 candelas, which would be pretty much equivalent to something like a 100 watt light bulb. Now, what we're going to see is if we were to come in and render this out, we'll probably see almost no difference in our lighting. Alright, and you can see, sure enough, it really doesn't make uh, any difference which, if you think about it, does sort of make sense, because if we were to take a 100-watt light bulb and turn it on in the middle of a well-lit room in the middle of the day, you probably won't see much influence from that light bulb. 
So we're really going to have to crank this up if we want this to be seen. So in my, my case, I'll take this up to something like maybe 6,500 candelas and re-render that. There we are. Now you can see that's starting to bring a little bit more illumination into this side of the room. Uh, in my case, I might find this to be a little bit too much. I don't want to make this side of the room too bright and blown out, so I might just dial that down a little bit more. There we go. That's a little bit better. Now, uh, just a little bit more subtle light on this side of the room. So let's now start to bring maybe a little bit more lighting over here. So what I'll do is just take this existing light here and just duplicate that. So press and hold the shift key on my keyboard. Click and drag. If I can grab that light. There we go. So we'll go ahead and create this secondary light. Let's move in a little bit tighter. And let's start to get this light set up. So I'll come in and maybe just start by resetting its rotational values. So that way we can basically get this reset. There we are. So I'll rotate that to 90 degrees. And let's come in and start to play with the overall size of this. This light will probably want to be a little bit larger uh, because I really want it to provide kind of a nice splash light up against this wall. So in my case, I'm going to dial this size of the light up a little bit more. So I'll take that to something like 120 centimeters by 120. Gets that way a little bit larger light source. A little bit more splash involved there. Now, as far as the overall placement of this light, I'm going to try to position it maybe just a little bit outside of the camera's view. So sort of down here like that. Now the light's a little bit high, so I might maybe try to bring this down a little bit lower. But again, this is all just a matter of uh, taste and just what you uh, are looking for. Oops, I think I accidentally moved the room here, so let's undo that really quick. There we are. Okay, so with that, let's go ahead and take a quick render. All right, excellent. And that actually just now brings a little bit more illumination in here. Uh, kind of gives us maybe a little bit stronger feel of some illumination that might be coming through that back window and uh, just kind of splashing up against that wall. Uh, all these little things that you can do just kind of help to lend itself a little bit more to that sense of realism of this is maybe some kind of a real interior that has been staged with lights, uh, cameras, things like that. Now, again, as I mentioned before, looking at this, you can see that there are definitely still some issues uh, that we're going to have to resolve here. So you can see, obviously, some of the shadowing uh, when some of these areas is almost non-existent, so uh, these pillows sort of look like they're floating. Uh, same with this chair, you can see the shadows aren't looking very great. Again, we'll come back and address all of these things a little bit later, because to start to get those shadows and all these other things in, in place, it's going to really, really start to slow down our render. So I know that by bumping up my render quality, I can start to get those shadows back, but uh, knowing that I can always get those back at a later point in time, I'll just save those for when I really need it. So in our next lesson, we're going to work on adding a few more materials to this scene, and then we'll be ready to talk about some of our final render settings.